Hi, my name is Paul. Welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I'm going to talk about the induction coil. And you may have seen this in the classroom. And I want to explain basically how an induction coil works and why it's used in the classroom. And in essence, the induction coil is really made up of two coils. We have an inner coil here and an outer coil. Now, the outer coil is not obvious in terms of the number of windings around this, but it is important to understand that there is a significantly larger number of windings in this coil and then this coil. And so, in essence, what we have here is what we call a transformer. And I have a video on how transformers work, but this is basically a glorified transformer. And the induction coil will allow us, as if you know what transformers do, to step up or step down the voltage. In this case, we have a step up transformer because our primary coil here has smaller number of turns than our secondary coil over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it over here to a low voltage supply. And I'm going to switch it on in a moment. But the important thing about an induction coil, or any transformer for that matter, is, is that we need a regular change of flux in order to induce an EMF in our secondary coil. Now, normally lots of transformers use alternating current, or AC, because you get a rapid changing of flux all the time as the current goes backwards and forwards. And in this case, we have clearly connected to DC. Why is that? Well, what we have here is a small tapper. And in a moment when I turn it on, and I'll focus the video on in a moment, uh, is what it's going to do is I'm going to connect the DC supply, but what the tapper does is regularly switch the current on and off at a reasonably high frequency, which means you're going to get an on and off and on and off, and as a result, you're going to get a changing flux because you're getting a changing voltage. It goes from zero to max, zero to max, and so forth. And then likewise, what you're going to do is you're going to therefore produce an EMF that is in the opposite direction based on Lenz's law, but it's going to be a significantly higher voltage. And that's what this does. We're going to get something anywhere from 6 to 9 volt input, and we're going to get thousands of volts in the output. And the way we're going to demonstrate that is I'm going to place these terminals close together, and because of the high voltages, we're going to see a little bit of sparking going across here, across the terminals. You've got to be careful with this, by the way, if you're using this in the classroom, the voltage here won't necessarily kill you, but it'll pack a punch, it'll hurt. So certainly take care with using this particular device. So let's turn it on. You hear the tapping? sparked a little bit and I'm going to move it a little bit closer and you can see it's now tapping and it's actually sparking quite significantly. Now what happens if I were to pull this out? Well clearly if I pull this out I'm going to get a lower voltage because less of the secondary coil is in the confines of the primary coil. You can see I'm going to get no sparking over here. If I bring it in so you're going to get a lot higher voltage as a result. Now that is your induction coil. Now why would a teacher use that? Well, if you need high voltages, such as using to demonstrate cathode ray tubes, using the Crookes tubes and so forth, then this is a good source of a high voltage power supply. And I have a video where I demonstrate, for example, uh, a charge in an electric field, and I demonstrate a vacuum tube, and I've used an induction coil there to, um, to use it as a voltage supply. Now, contrary to uh, opinion, you might hear of some um, sources saying that induction coil produces X-rays. That isn't quite correct. X-rays are produced, generally speaking, from the cathode ray tubes that are connected to it. But the spark that here is blue does release a little bit of ultraviolet light as well. So there is some release of electromagnetic radiation. And this sparking, of course, because we have moving charges in between these gaps, we're going to get uh, the production of radio waves as well. So if you turn a radio on AM in the distance, you'll hear the sparking as well. And that's another thing your teacher might use to demonstrate, let's say, the production of electromagnetic waves because of moving charges. Anyway, hope that helped you understand the induction coil. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please like, share and subscribe. Bye for now. Well, I hope that helped you understand the concepts. Thanks for watching. Please remember, like, share and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. 
The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.